This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. We do know that, and I've just seen this, that Paul Skeens will be starting the Major League All-Star game for the National League. Oh, yeah. He'll be just the fifth rookie to ever start the uh, Major League All-Star game. The last one was Hideo Nomo in 1995. And he, I mean, he wasn't really like a rookie. He was a major league rookie. He had had a, like a six-year career in the Japanese major leagues by that point. So it's something when the number one overall pick is as good as advertised, AT, and it looks like Skeens definitely is. Well, yeah, I just saw this. Um, you know, I've been following loosely, and I, I know yesterday he got pulled from a no-hitter with 99 pitches or whatever. And, but I, I just tweeted out because I'm not really a baseball guy. You guys know I, I like to have some fun and, you know, you know, when, when when one coach leaves for their biggest rival the day after the national championship game, then maybe I'll have an opinion or two. But uh, generally, just just casually kind of follow the sport. And I couldn't really remember anything quite like this. And it's funny, though, because I, I did think of Hideo Nomo. That, you know, when I was obviously younger, I was much more into baseball. And I do remember that summer of, I believe, 96. I mean, he really took the sport by storm. But to your point, I, you know, I have to look it up. But I'm pretty sure he was like a 27, 28-year-old rookie not a guy that was in Omaha rubbing elbows, you know, well, he wasn't at, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, he wasn't rubbing elbows with Bill Elson at the hog pen a year before. So uh, it's a cool story. And, you know, I think um, it's a testament to the talent of baseball. Uh, I know he's a once in a generation guy, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a testament to the talent of baseball players in the SEC. Uh, and it's kind of an incredible story that, that, you know, again, one year after, after leading LSU to a national championship, He's playing. Uh, he's starting the All Star game. Well, I wonder what what have you thought of um, listening or watching uh, or reading around uh, Big Twelve Media Days here this week? We've had the Mike Gundy thing. The, the kind of that was a great way to start talking season. Um, you had uh, Shador <laughs> Sanders saying that every game Colorado plays is their Super Bowl, which. I see you've got an interesting um, thought on that, which I think some people say there's no way that's true, but then a lot of those people will tune in to watch that game. Um, and now that's all in the background with the, the rumors of maybe Clemson and Florida State like getting into the Big 12 sometime soon, which I don't believe. It has been an interesting week in the Big 12. Well, it's been, it's been an interesting week. You know, the, <laughs> the Gundy stuff, you know, I, I generally, you and I have been doing this forever, Phil, is that, uh, you know, when everyone has the same opinion on something, it's like, uh, I don't need to come out against drunk driving. I think we all uh, have a similar opinion on that. You know, the Shador stuff, I will say, I was a little, you know, listen, everything Dion says, everything Shador says, it's a thing. But one, if you actually listen to the clip, he kind of says it in passing. But two, I will say, like, I mean, I live not that far from the Rose Bowl. Uh, UCLA can tell me how many people they get. I think it's usually about probably 20, 25,000. They had 71,000 people when Colorado was there. They had to literally take off tarps that they don't take off ever when Colorado was in town. Dan Lanning, I always seem to remember one of his uh, pregame speeches being aired last year, and it wasn't against Washington in the Pac-12 championship game to go to the college football playoff. It was against Colorado. Uh, Arizona State sold out at a stadium that they really don't sell out very often. So, you, you know, by the way, Matt Rule, in an interview the other day, said how important Colorado is for college football because Deion Sanders brings in a crowd that normally wouldn't watch the sport. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I try not to let my facts get I try not to get, let facts get in the way of my feelings, uh, but I was a little surprised by that. You know, as far as the realignment stuff, you know, listen, we know Florida State wants out. We know Clemson would be behind them. I'm with you, Phil. I, I don't know – I like what, what? What would you go to the Big Twelve for? A little bit more money. The competition isn't better. The league isn't better. Um, but those are certainly the rumblings. Those are certainly what people are saying. That's one I need to see before I believe. But then again, I would say, you know, when Texas and Oklahoma, when it was first rumored that they were going to the SEC, I said it doesn't make sense for the other SEC schools, and it happened like two days later. So, who knows there? But I'm with you. Is that? That one doesn't feel like it makes a ton of sense on paper, but maybe I'm missing something big there. Hey, Aaron, this Sunday, it's it's not the Super Bowl for the NFL, but it is a Super Bowl. you got the European Championship, Spain and England at two, and then you get Messi. Could be his last game at Argentina. They're going to take on Colombia for the Copa Championship. Uh, do, you, are, do you pay attention to soccer at all? 
kind of like baseball. I, you know, the, the European tournament's on during the day. I'm usually kind of running around, but I've kind of enjoyed having the Copa on at night. It was funny. Uh, the, there was an early round game at SoFi Stadium. Me and my father-in-law almost went about two weeks ago because he loves soccer. We weren't able to make it happen, but I found it to be very entertaining. Just, you know, there was a, there was a stretch where it was like every game was ending in a shootout. Um, and, I, you know, over the July 4th holiday, I was at home. I was actually doing a lot of Fox Sports Radio. And so you get home from doing radio during the day, you kind of just throw on the TV, throw on, you know, throw a couple burgers on the grill, have a good time. So I've enjoyed the tournaments. Uh, I, I don't know much about uh, much of anything. I was actually watching the Columbia-Uruguay game <laughs> when the players started fighting and the fans started fighting. So uh, it's definitely, listen, I think it's been a great kind of thing to fill the void in the summer. Uh, I know football is going to football is basically here at this point, but um, you know, it's been a fun thing to fill the void during the summer. Obviously the Olympics are coming. That, that's that's going to be a fun two, three week stretch as well. But, uh, but yeah, I've been, I've been watching, you know, I don't know that I have any like amazing takes on it, but I've been watching and certainly enjoying it. I mean, I've actually, <laughs> I told this the other day on the show, you know, I don't know how you get your TV, but I use YouTube TV and you know, all these, all these, websites think they know you better than you know yourself and in some cases maybe they're right so it, it tells you you know it puts the first thing on that it thinks you want to watch and it put on dodgers phillies because normally that's what i'd want to watch i actually turned the television on to put on the the match that you were referring to uh the soccer match like if and and there are there are high school friends of mine um that if that that if they put 17 year old phil next to 47 year old phil they would think these are two totally different people based upon my choice of what I watched on Sunday. Well, you know, it was a one-off. I don't know that, you know, you're, you're, you're buying, uh, you know, Atlanta FC tickets and, and, you know, driving eight hours each way to go to games or anything like that. But, no, I mean, listen, you know, what, what I would say is, is that um, I, I think what stands out is, first of all, we're Americans. I think we love anything at the highest level. Um, you know, we get to watch the best basketball players, best baseball players, football players in the world. But two, um, I do think there's something to, you know, the national element of it, country against country. And I think what's clear and, you know, I don't know if the U.S. fits into this category, but all these countries care so much. Like, I was telling my wife, like, I was blown away. If you watch that Columbia game on whatever it was, Tuesday or Wednesday, that whole stadium was full of yellow in North Carolina, it was like, dude, these people care so much, you know, and, and Brazil, I, listen, I'm far from the right person to talk about this, but I think there's urgency. The players clearly care. Um, you know, we watch sports where like the NBA, there's, there's 82 regular season games. Guys aren't invested. Even college basketball. I love college basketball, but you play 31 regular season games. You're not going to have the same energy every single night where you watch these tournaments you can tell how much it matters to the fans. You can tell how much it matters to the players. Uh, you know, there's the urgency of the single elimination. I just think it makes for great TV, like you said, Phil, even if, you know, again, I'm just not the expert on who's going to win and what it's going to look like and who's doing what. But I have found myself very entertained by this tournament. Hey, Aaron, with uh, with Kawhi Leonard having to, to, to step down, which is probably probably a smart move, were you surprised uh, that, it, that, it was, that it was Derek White and not Jalen Brown? And did you see the clip where they were interviewing Jason Tatum? Do you think there's any – is there anything there or there's nothing there because they just won a title uh, between Tatum and Brown? I felt bad for Tatum because he kind of had to answer some questions that he clearly had no, – you know, it's not like Jason Tatum had a say in it. And – you know, I, I felt bad for him because, you know, if you say that Jalen should be there, then it means that you're saying that Derek White shouldn't be there. So, uh, you know, listen, I think it's that time of year. There's not a lot going on. Uh, but I will say, like, um, I'm not – I'm far from the biggest NBA guy, but I did actually watch that exhibition the other night, and I actually really enjoy watching all those players play together. And I think there's something, again, a lot like we were, what we were just talking about with soccer, um, to uh, the idea that um, – you know, that, that like all these guys are going to be playing really hard and giving a hundred percent and there's a lot on the line. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I felt bad for Tatum. Um, Cause I think he got put in kind of a crappy position where if he credited one person, he had to discredit the other person. But overall I'll say I did watch that exhibition, which was on right after the Columbia match the other night. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to USA basketball. Now let me ask you guys a question. You guys going to Dallas next week? And if so, what are you most intrigued by? Because I can't believe that we are already here 
but we are already here, people. Football is upon us. Ty Richardson will be uh, will be headed to uh, to Dallas. He's our ambassador. Oh, SEC course. Media Days. Yeah, he is the. You know that he is the ESPN Arkansas. He gets all the good trips. He is the ambassador, but he is also the um, the designated karaoke singer. So that's why he's going. Who eats first? That's all I know. That's what I've been told. So absolutely, yeah. I mean, so that's I mean, what his line. Th- that's his th- line. This is this. I mean, it's going to be a really interesting week, just in terms of. Uh, you know, getting a new coach in at Alabama and Kalen DeBoer, and he's got uh, he's. I mean, I think this is a fantastic coach. Just looking at where he's won and, and the uh, and the the rate that he has won, and probably has his uh, his most talented roster that he's ever had before. And you're thinking of Georgia, you know, getting back into the playoff after after back to back national titles. Of course, the Texas and Oklahoma teams coming in. Texas is right now is a. Uh, a front runner along with Georgia and Ohio State for uh, for a national championship, and how many SEC teams can make it into the playoff twelve this year? I mean, there's just a short list of probably like eight hundred questions that you could ask any of the coaches that'll be up there this next week. But it is the um, it is the marquee media days, right? You know, Big Twelve had to get out of the way first. ACC scheduled their media days at the same time that the Big Ten is going on. I saw the Pac-2 still did a media yeah. day yesterday. And then next week is all SEC. Every, and really, here's the person that everybody wants to hear from, Greg Sankey. Greg Sankey mm-hmm. is who everybody wants to hear from. And, you know, you'll get, I don't know if you could call it coach speak, but you'll get some commissioner speak. But this is the guy that does, I mean, he moves the needle. He moves the needle. He does, and... It's just like, it just feels like this weird time where so much has changed. We know about the realignment and 12 team playoff, but there, it feels like there's a lot more coming and it doesn't feel like it's that far down the pipe. I mean, not just the stuff we know about paying players, all that, but like the, um, it just feels like we got to be getting close to whatever the future of college football is. Like, I know we started talking about Florida state and Clemson. I don't, I don't have any amazing perspective on it other than what I hear and read. It's pretty under the wraps, but it just feels like we can't keep going. This team moves here. That it, it can't go on forever. Oh. At some point there's got to be however many teams it is. They break off, do their own thing. And we get some semblance of stability back for the Olympic sports and whatever. Um, don't know if that'll happen. Don't know when it'll happen. But to your point, Phil, you know, Greg Sankey's the guy that has his finger on the pulse of all that. And I, I don't expect him to say anything earth shattering, but I think it'll be interesting to see going forward. I t- and you're right about that. I mean, so there's like the macro, the micro conversations about what's, you know, what your team looks like and what the season might look like and everything. But the macro conversation around college football, man, I think when you're going to see the change, you know, that that, uh, that playoff, the college football playoff gets uh, changed again in a couple of years. Um, this this contract runs out after two seasons. Follow the money, follow the TV contracts. That's when that's Great when call. things will change in a pretty massive way. But you're right; it won't be like the little piecemeal of this team going here, this team going there. It'll be a big break off of like a chunk of teams, 30, 40, who knows, uh, that form their own thing. But I think you're right about that, and there will be questions about yeah. it this, next week too. No, and it's just it just feels like you know because I, I you see all this stuff about Florida State and Clemson. Well, what does the ACC do, and who do they add? And it's like, who cares? Like, just get me to wherever the finish line is with however many teams it is. You know, Bet Online is your number one basketball. source for all your betting needs. The get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues schools. to be the fastest like, and easiest way like to place I mean, your wagers, look, including you live betting now, and your favorite Cal, casino Stanford, and card cetera, games SEC, available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BLEAV. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the the game starts.